Detroit. Hello, Highland Park. Are you calling Hello, Ham Tremick. Well, we have been here in a while. Well, so uh, we want to just tell everybody hello and wake everybody up. Uh, we've been away from the studio uh, for a couple of weeks now. Lots of things going on, and so we haven't been uh, 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 up front and personal. And want to say hello and good evening to everyone as we close out March, International Women's Month. My name is Maureen Taylor, and I work with the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization, and this is the broadcast every Friday at 7 o'clock of the Ask Welfare Rights Program. I'm here with my colleague, Marion Kramer, who is the national chairperson of the National Welfare Rights Union, and she's going to give an official welcome. Marion. Uh, we are so glad to be here tonight because, you know, once you miss one of these programs, you... Uh, you say, uh, we won't be able to talk to some of the people that's on the front line out here, uh, as well as the other folks that we're trying to coach to get out there on the front line. Uh, you're listening to uh, WHPR, w and I want you to go to your website, if you have to have the website, is www.tv33whpr.com. You are watching us uh, from Highland Park. You mm -hmm. remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we want you to participate by calling those numbers below. And the, they are 868-336. Again, 868-4336. And 868-00-351. Uh, yeah, 351. Lord, my eyes are getting worse. Again, welcome, and let's get started. All right. Well, Marion, you know, there are so many things going on. We've been away last couple of weeks, and maybe we should start off by saying something about the pride we have in these children that uh, last uh, Friday night left about 8, 8.30 uh, last Friday evening, uh, packed inside of a bus on their way to Washington, D.C., and the message was these these students, high school students, college students, parents, chaperones, on their way from around the country to talk about their anger and frustration with uh, the government not being able to keep them safe in school. And how absolutely proud we were of these children as they got on that bus, knowing that was an all-night trip, get to uh, the demonstration the shout out, the call out, the rally in D.C. Stay there three, four, five, six, seven hours, however many hours that was that they were there. And then they didn't get back on that bus again until 5 o'clock that evening and got back into the city of Detroit around 4. So I was, it's more than pride to watch them uh, get on that bus and, and on their way uh, to make a statement. So, you know, uh, uh, what would you share about that? Then I want to talk about that young man who keeps getting um, attacked. But what do you think about those uh, children from everywhere? I am, I'm very happy that uh, they took that trip uh, because it opened up the eyes of some young people that uh, have had the opportunity to do what our children have done, and that is go to D.C. and voice your complaints on whatever it is that you are taking up at the, at the particular time. One thing Crystal said, it was good they left when they did mm -hmm. because the bus driver got them there in plenty of time for them to be right up in front of uh, of the stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you look at look at, uh, the amount of people who were there, Roaring, like always, they want to underestimate uh, estimate, um how many people were there? Now, as you and you came up with a number, <laughs> and, and as you know, we've been there several times. And uh, one time we were there, there was over a million women there uh, for their lives. At the same time, we've been up there twice for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the same time, there's been marches like the one that Dr. Martin Luther King uh, was uh, a part of and was heading up. But they won't always say that it was below a million. It was not below a million, and if you if you have some kind of um, 
uh, analysis of 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 uh, being able to participate in those type of activities, you get to the point that you begin to understand how many people were there because well, they could not move. Um, you know, we were at the uh, the Women's March uh, last year. And, we and and, and uh, uh, well, the one kiss a little while ago, but that one mm. that we went to, and uh, Carolyn and them had the baby buggy, and Lord, it was you know we <laughs> couldn't buggy. even get we couldn't take them. It, well, no, remember she had that wagon. I mean, baby buggy, but you remember that wagon? That was for solidarity. No, that was for the women's march. I don't and remember. Carolyn that. And Carolyn and and Loretta, all of us were there, and Sylvia demanded to go down front. We told her good luck. Get down as yes. close as you could, you yes. know. Do you remember that? And and it was a lot of people there. Remember, we had to check with the police how many people oh, because the they were one, talking yeah. about two hundred fifty thousand uh, were expected. And the police, uh, remember, they told us that there was more than a half a million there yeah. already that morning. But with these uh, students, uh, the number that they're coming up with right now is over eight hundred thousand. So it's close to a million, but it could have been. But it was large. It, it was, was huge. Large. Plus, if you look, you know, at I gotta get closer. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you look at what was happening was around the uh, country and around the world. Around the world. That's I mean, it was. I was so proud of him. And what one thing that um, one of our people talked about today that lives in uh, Oakland, uh, California, she took it even further and was proud of how these people, how these young people are demonstrating around the young men that was shot 20 times. And, you know, the fact that... Uh, shot at 20 times. Times, yeah. <laughs> they, well, they claim that, what, six bullets killed? I don't know. They? Yeah, that's what know, they said today. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, she said they are very respected, uh, I mean, very respected of, of the community and what have you. And it's a different type of demonstration that we're used to seeing young people, you know, knock out windows and stuff like that. She said, but they are, uh, it makes you feel good. Sacramento. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. makes you real f uh, feeling good that we do have young people out here that are beginning to uh, to do something and take the lead on, a, on, on what they believe in. Caller, you're on the air. You're the first caller of the night. Thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air. Greetings unto you. And greetings. You're really Easter. And, and and happy Easter and other happy holidays Easter. to you as well. <laughs> I think with those of us that are young, we get our teaching and training from those of you that are older. And many times what happens <coughs> as you get older, many people forget the humbleness of their teachings from God. And they began to promise things and lie to the youth in general, promise they want to do this, promise to help with this, and don't keep their word. So how can you very well expect greatness to come and the teacher and the presenter was never a great presentation to, you know, refer to? No, I understand. One thing I like when the Bible says in Psalms 101 that God hates a liar, and a liar shall not tarry in God's eyesight. That's a proverb I think, Maureen, you should memorize. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, 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 the uh, youth that uh, took the position that they wanted to demand that adults keep them safe, they went right to the heart of the matter. Of the and, and, and that was just so, you know, they're so clear and so fearless about what the demands are. So we agree with you, caller, okay? Not only that, but I want to bring something on the mind. If you see, there's so much tragedy happening in the schools where they have to be afraid. If you think about it, there's never been a time in history Kids call in, threaten to do harm to the school. Now, unnecessarily for a prank, they could be doing 20 years to life. Yeah, Again, I saw that. When you got older people who lie, promise to help them, and promise to help people in general, and they don't keep their word, this is the outcome. 
I hear you. And isn't it a good day? Isn't it a wonderful day that in the end, God is still on the throne? All the time, caller. We uh, 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 want to say from your lips to God's ears, thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Please make sure you keep your word, Maureen. Uh, I don't know what that means, but I, I ain't in the habit of not keeping my words. But let me you say sure? happy Passover and happy you holidays sure? to you, caller. Thank you so much. Uh, caller, you on the air. Thank you for waiting and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air. Good evening, ladies, and happy, happy Easter to you both. And thank you I, so much. You're welcome. I was wondering, did we ever get uh, anybody that works on roofs to call in? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Uh, oh, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, no, eight nine one four nine zero zero. Eight nine one four nine zero zero. Four nine zero zero. All right, now that's uh, 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 Erico three one three eight nine one forty nine hundred, and okay. that's uh, Captain Thomas. Captain Thomas. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, all right, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Caller, you on the air. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Caller, you there? Happy Friday. And happy Friday, and thank you so much. Well, uh, well you know, I think we got to do a whole lot more than praying and, and, and uh, voting, because uh, according to some of the reports I've been reading, there's 45.8 million people being enslaved all over the world. Yeah, In Libya, they slaves. charge and starting off auctions at $400 per black male on up on their uh, slave, slave trade. Uh, in the United States, there's about, um, who, where's the number here? Here we go. 57,000 in U.S. Uh, being enslaved. Well, we well, caller, when you say being enslaved, what what do you mean? Fifty seven thousand being enslaved. What do you mean? Twenty seventeen slavery still rings. So these people are being sold for four hundred, starting four hundred dollars in Libya. They selling black males, and the starting. Oh, you talking about the slave on the trade. trade? On the slave trade. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they also saying that. Forty-five point eight million around the world people are still being enslaved, and in uh, uh, U.S. of A, fifty-seven thousand is still being enslaved. I believe that this is a, a cross connection of uh, the organs, the sex, and the slave trade. I think they're all in cahoots and in connection. And when you think about our FBI, CIA, our Department of Justice, and police departments are infiltrated. With KKK the Nazis, uh, I'm pretty sure they got some kind of covert operations where all these people are coming up missing and they're being yeah, put into a slavery. So and um, I think we got to do a whole so lot of eye family. opening because I don't think this stuff is far fetched because the numbers are out there now. I just even read about some teenagers in a small town, the black children, women. Girls and boys, they're coming up missing now. Yeah. And the, the yeah. list goes on. It's really like a horror, out of limits, Twilight Zone, horror movies, what's going on. Yeah. I really uh, want to shout out to those young folks who were brave enough to go to D.C. and speak up about the, the violence and, and the gun uh, NRA. And it's sad to see that they're being threatened. And one... Uh, Young man, they won't allow him in three colleges because of his fight with the NRA on that gun control. This well, uh, we we gonna talk crazy. about that man. That's that young man. That Stu's last yeah. name is Hog. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I hang up and listen. You All right, caller. Thank you for your thoughts. To, I'm still on my way with the donation. I called a couple of weeks ago. They wasn't there, so I guess I'll try again Monday. Oh, uh, thank <laughs> you so very much. <laughs> okay. All, All right, right now. Okay. Uh, caller, thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. Caller, you there? Caller, thank you for waiting. Thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. Caller, you. Caller, yes, you're on the air. You have to turn your TV down. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, you're on the air. Okay, this is uh, Dolores Lewis. Yes. Okay, what I'm calling for is this here. Why uh, is that bad? Uh, ma'am, ma'am, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, turn your TV down because we can hear the echo here. Okay, there you go. All right, now go ahead. Okay, what I'm calling for is why is it that the president is going to okay for teachers to carry guns in the schools, which it doesn't make any sense to me because everybody has problems. When I was going to school, it wasn't like this at all. You go to school, you do your work. No one came in uh, with guns or anything. After you get out of school, they had activities for the kids to do. As far as playing baseball, you want to go swimming. They had uh, things that you can do as far as going to camp. Or you even go out to Bill Isle. Sure. And have uh, uh, lunch. If you didn't have no lunch, some of the teachers would do that. I used to live in southwest Detroit on Delray Street. Yes, ma'am. And I went to Cary School, middle school. And that's what we had then. Now, now Marion. It wasn't anything like it is today. Okay, Marion is like going that. to uh, tell. Marion is going to explain a little bit more and talk a little bit more about this change that you're absolutely correct about and why it is that they don't need you and us anymore. Okay, <laughs> that's the difference. You know, we used to have schools on every other corner and uh, 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 all kinds of things that we used to have. We go down this trip down memory lane every now and then and talk about the different movie theaters that used to be in Detroit, the different restaurants that used to be in Detroit, yeah. all of that, and how many of those things are gone. But, ma'am, it's a reason why but things you know have changed. Can I, can I say this one thing to you? Yes, ma'am. I was four years old before I even went to school. And my father took me downtown to go to the show to see Cinderella. Yep. And it was at the Fox Theater. That's right. But before we went there, we had stopped at Woolworths mm -hmm. downtown. And I will never in my life forget that. Now, was it Woolworths? Or was it yes, Kresge's? It was. Huh? Was it Woolworths or was it Kresge's? No, it was Woolworths. Okay. All I right. never will forget that. And it was downtown. Okay. And I, I hadn't even started school. All right. And he, he took me down there. And I went in. And I sat at the seat. It was a stool. And that that crying, I didn't know yes. what was going on. And when my father came in, he told me, he said, we can't sit here. And I said, oh, why? He said, we got to go down. We had to go further down the set. And I didn't know what he was talking about at that time. Mm -mm. So as I got older and knew what was going on, then I knew why. Well, now, ma'am. Because it was like the white people said, come in, and they sat there, and the blacks had to go down further. They, You know, it wasn't that they didn't allow the blacks to come in. It was just that you had to go down. Okay, let me, let, me, let me say this to you. All righty, uh, and then uh, 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 we're going to uh, ask Marion to share a few comments about this. See, I didn't have that experience, and my family grew up in Detroit, and they used to have DDD days downtown, 
and up and down Woodward Avenue, there were so many people that if you fainted, you couldn't, you couldn't, you, you didn't hit the ground. So it was Kresge's that was right there on that corner of Woodward and I don't know what the yeah, other street yeah, was. Yeah, but see, by yeah, the time uh, uh, I came and went downtown, there were no barriers about where I could go. I could go wherever my money took me. And so my father took me to the Fox Theater. And when we went, I complained, Daddy, I can't see, because he took us to the Motown Review. And on the Fox Theater, there was a, a Jackie Wilson and the Temptations and the Contours. First, I look at the purse, all of that. So the experience that you have, and I know it's very valid, but by the time I got here, you had already broken the color lines. But I'm going to ask Marion. Uh, I'm going to ask Marion to say a little something. We got two more callers. We're going to get. And then we're going to talk a little bit about why, objectively, things have changed, okay? Okay, can I just say this one thing? Uh, quickly. The, the first time I went down to the Fox, the, uh, the teenagers was there, Frankie Lyman and the teenagers. Why do fools fall in love? Fall in love, that's right. That was the first time All right. that, I went, that, uh, that I went there. We weren't able to get in, you know, because we didn't have no money, but we met them, so you know, coming, you know, money. coming in <laughs> and whatever, you know, so. <laughs> I understand. It's school. All right, dear. You know. Thank you for bringing that history up. All right. And thank you, too. And okay, thank you so Donna. very much. Okay, Mary, let's take this call and then uh, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about these objective Issues. Uh, Carla, you're on the air. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting, and uh, you are on the air. Carla, you there? Okay, go ahead, Mary. You know, uh, Objective you know, uh, people keep thinking, you know, because right here in, wait, let me back up, Maureen. Right here in Highland Park, we had some of the best schools around, and you knew it, Maureen, uh, around, and... Um, you know, blacks went there, and uh, those that began to move into Highland Park. And people would move into Highland Park and use someone's address to be able to, for the purpose of getting their children in, in decent uh, schools in, in Highland, Highland Park. Park. Yeah. Uh, in Detroit, so Detroit was good, and what have you. But it became a time, Maureen, in society, and people had jobs then. You know, they needed people to work in those factories, those uh, those uh, uh, where they make the cars, as well as those factories that brought in the equipment. <coughs> those uh, they call it just in time type of theory right now. And with that, there they they kept uh, you know upgrading our education. So now, what does that mean? That means people had to not only be strong enough to work. But you need to, needed to know that this screw went in this hole That's for right. what reason. And some folks had to learn how to do blueprint reading. Some people had to learn heating things. So there was an educational level that you had to that maintain. They, that you had to maintain. But at the same time, as, these, as technology came in, and the old robot, he ain't no, the, the robot began to Please. work. Mm -hmm. There's a there is something you need to remember. At one time, they uh, brought robots in to enhance the ability of the workers to even produce even much more and much rapidly. As they kept building these robots and and computer uh, help, I mean you know developing new technology, more and more people were laid off. More and more people were losing their jobs because they didn't need the amount of people that they needed at one time to be able to produce the cars that, that uh, they were putting out on the street, Maureen. And Mary, let me just give that one example and then please go on. I, I love this example. When the uh, first, independence, first Independence National Bank, the yes. first black bank we had in mm -hmm. Detroit, when it first opened, I was one of the first 100 contributors. Downtown and I ran Detroit. downtown with $100 on State Street and opened up an account. 
and and uh, uh, I was so happy to do that. And for years, I would go down to that bank, and and that's where I would do banking business. Well, there came a time where uh, uh, Mary Baker, man, she didn't retire now, and Mary sent me a ATM card. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just another piece of plastic or something. Called her, asked her, "What's this you sent me?" She said, "This is called an automatic teller." Uh, card or whatever it was they were called in the beginning and I went down to the bank Mary and then she showed me how to do it put it in the slot come up with your phone numbers and answer whatever the other questions were and money comes out of the machine and it was inside the bank then now I used to go in there and see Jackie and Miss Mary and whoever else and talk to them about their kids and how's your husband and all this other kind of stuff and knew all their families and whatnot. when I got that card Mary I went to the machine. Then they moved that ATM machine onto the wall oh. outside. Then I started using my ATM card outside, and I would knock on the window and wave to my friends, but I didn't go in that bank no more. You didn't know? I didn't know. All right, and then one time I went down there, and it was gone, and it's a sign saying they moved the bank to two or three different locations, and one over there near my house, near Seven Mile in Livernois, and I went there, and Mary, and there used to be 20 bank tellers. Yes. And the bank president, and they used to give you coffee and tea and donuts and all that. When I got to that Seven Mile location, there were two or three tellers, two ATM machines in the building, one outside the building, and the manager was sitting in the back. That's when I knew. That's and and that I was the it. same kind of thing that was happening in other industries, too. Yeah. You know, when it came to production of potato chips, don't need, you need, don't need those hands. Manufacturing, me in the beginning said manufacturing. Then you need hands to be able to produce. Right now, they don't need that. The computer, I mean, the um, robot outproduces out what we had to produce at one time. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, the capitalists uh, control these computers, computers and, own, and own the uh, profits that comes out of there. You get enough. You don't understand that you just only get enough money to make sure your family have some food or something like that, but enough money to bring you, to bring back, you to back. back. And so and, now, Marion, uh, say something about uh, uh, this. Uh, it, it, it's, it, this is just so key. Because this young lady is asking these questions about what is the difference. Now, now, uh, a Dodge Main, Chevrolet Gear and Axle, uh, 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 Huber Avenue Huber Foundry, Avenue Foundry. Uh, Lynch Road Assembly, uh, Max Stampin. Boy, I used to have a good time at going with them workers over there at Max oh, Stampin. Oh, we used to good, enjoy big that. Time. Uh-huh. And, and all of those factories that had three and 4,000 people in them, and then when they were closed, and tell that story about when the factories closed down for changeover. And at first, changeover was this long, and then it took this time, and then this time. And then all of a sudden, the factory didn't open back up again. (laughs) You know, uh, know, the workers used to be waiting for those changeover because it was not considered as a vacation at that time. It was changing from one model Mm -hmm. uh, to another model. So in other words, if they were still doing the changeovers like they they did at at that time, you will be... uh, getting rid of the 2000 and what 2000 2000 and 2001 and you might be out for two weeks and sometimes three and four weeks until those parts uh, arrive there for you to be able to hook them up so you know people look forward to that but step by step as the computer as the robot took why well, I'm just keep saying computer, robot took over <laughs> then uh, they didn't need those hands no more. And those changeover and you parts should see it. took overnight. Whereas we would tour the uh, factories. Port Rouge. And mm-hmm. um, it was amazing to see that you follow uh, some of the iron from the time mm. that they mix it up and put it out on, on, the, on the cable to be able to shake what they needed for a particular car. That was, that you, it was something to man here, but you felt the heat. You'd be way up walking yeah, mm-hmm. around. And, and those catwalks filthy. at the top. Yeah, remember how filthy it would be in there? Well, it was scary. And now you go out to, if you can, go out to Forge Rouge. For that you tour. Have, you'll see people sometime with um, white jackets on. 
Oh, those floors uh, not dirty like they used dirty. to be. They're not dirty. They are not dirty at all. They're taking their time. They don't have to um, almost kill themselves to uh, put the parts together because Injuries the machine and all of is that. doing yeah. it. And you know, I told you that when my son went out to work, when my son went out there to work, I said, "What did you? What are you doing?" He said, "Well, what I do, Granny, is I end up laying out the uh, the tools." And the equipment for the robot. <laughs> and I'm, I'm listening to this. Mm -hmm. I say you, you, you give I the say, robot well, you the tools. You know they they have reversed the concept. Yep. Because at one time the robot used to give was, you the tools. Used to give <laughs> you the uh, necessary tools, and now you're working to enhance the robot to produce. Now remember, robots do not need. Uh, salaries, uh, salaries, bathroom breaks, none vacations. of that, none of that, and Marie. they don't need uh, time off. No, nope. none you of that. You know, so where Navari is out there at the Rouge used to be, you know, when you go down to the tour, and and uh, the first thing they tell you is that at its peak, the most workers that used to be out there at the, uh, the Rouge complex in different buildings, the transmission shop, the engine shop, the glass, city and all out like that, there. was uh, just over one hundred thousand. It was more right. than that. It it was, well, no, that's what they say on the movie. Mm -hmm. oh, 100,000, oh, 101,000. That's right. And now it's fewer than 9,000 right. workers, and they're able to produce 12 times as many cars as 100,000 did. And, and that's this. what we're talking about now. And, and the other thing is that uh, a lot of them are working 12 hours. This, Like, for an example, if you on on the B line, mm -hmm. you might be working 12 hours this week just for four days. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. for four days. And now what that means, too, then, Marion, is if there are so many people that are not needed uh, 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 to help produce and not needed to work in the hospital, not needed to work at the why? factory, not needed to work at the school, why give you water? Hey, why educate you? Why do any of that? Why do you need housing? You don't, you don't you need, need those, those things, things because you, you have be become obsolete. You've become obsolete. So obsolete. If you don't understand that, go look it up. That means they don't, they don't need, need you. you. That's what that means. So and, and it's not just in the car, in, in the um, uh, auto factory. Auto manufacturing. Say, well, I, they are doing the same thing in uh, fast food, upgrading. Uh, and getting rid of workers because they have machines now. You go in, you tell a person, Maureen, mm -hmm. uh, what you I've want. Seen it. They hit the button. Here, here come the, uh, the same belt that you think about when you were on the assembly line. Mm -hmm. Come through there and the stop for the pump mm -hmm. and put the amount in. And the same assembly line, another one comes through there, and here's your hamburger or your cheese, uh, whatever going on. Whatever you want on and there. And it ends up with you. I, and the first time I experienced that, we were in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I said, there's only two people in here. And then I noticed, why? Because you well, that's all you there. needed they to produce. Mechanized now, the if, whole process. Now, if you go back out to Ford Rouge, say you go today, you go out next year, you're going to see workers probably laid off because they don't need that amount to produce. I, I was at the dry cleaners the other day, and I rarely go there, but I'm at the dry cleaners. And I can remember family members, my Uncle Robert, Robert Freeman, and, and other cousins and whatnot used to go get jobs under, under the table, go work mm -hmm. at the dry cleaners. And here I am in there, and it just brought that memory up, Marion. And I gave the guy my ticket. I went to get one of my coats clean. And he looked at it, and he did something. And then he went and he pushed a button. And, and the, the clothes out. start going around the racks by themselves. That's right. And I can remember when you would give them the ticket, they would look at it, and they'd have to go find yep. your clothes they based on numerical anymore. order. Push the button, and it can uh, coming around. And he got my coat, and he put it in the drawer, hit another button, and a screen came up. And it took my picture and said, Taylor, pick up coat on such and such a date. It was him and the, whoever it was that was working doing the in the work. back. And that was it. Yeah. And so, you know, what you're talking about is people need to really get a grip on this question of technology that has reversed 
the economy that we all live in forever. And, and the, you know, what does it mean, you know? And the, the ironic thing, Maureen, is that it's all private, privately owned, with tax breaks and everything else that, that they, anything they need, they get it. But at the same time, we, what happens to all the people mm -hmm. that have lost their job? Number one, look at um, public employees here. They just knew they'd get their pension back. That was really something, wasn't it? I mean, that was the biggest slap City in the workers. face you have seen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my Police thing, officers. we kept trying to tell the workers, if we don't go down there and support those workers, that set the pace for you to eventually think. It might be coming slowly. And Mr. Ford probably uh, uh, at this point is doing it slowly. But watch out. When they, when they don't need you to work on, uh, in order to produce the products that they are putting, the commodities that they are putting out, I don't care how friendly you've been with Mr. Ford and all the rest of them. They're going to let you go. This in other words, money. you want to you wanna say, well, what I'm going to, you hear people say, how am I going to pay for my children to go to college? Uh, You're not. How am I going to pay for my house? You're not. Uh, <laughs> you know, what about, you need to get out. A lot of you need to get out, and you just don't know the, how poverty is on the increase here in Michigan. Throughout well, the state, the young lady gave uh, some numbers about the number of people who are uh, enslaved around the world mm -hmm. and, and in this area. Uh, we've got uh, about 142 million people in this country, 142 million, million. Mm -hmm. that believe themselves uh, poor because they live at or below the poverty level. So we're talking about 330,000, uh, 330 million that live in this country, 142 million million believe that they live at or below the poverty level and i say that word believe is you know people don't want to be poor nope. and they don't want to say that they're poor but all of us uh that school teacher that uh, i met at the uh, general baker institute a couple of weeks ago that was talking about oh, how different yes. she was because she was a suburban teacher and and the uh, children that she's teaching are urban and how it's such a difference in terms of class and how she wasn't, you know, able to uh, 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 teach these kids because of the differences. And I thought, what is she talking about? She a, a through Z is still A through Z if you live in Redford, uh, Livonia, uh, Farmington Hills, or if you live in Hamtramck. It's still A through Z. And we still only have 10 primary numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And everything else is a combination of those numbers. But that's what she's thinking because that's what she was taught. That's what the differences are. So uh, uh, the question of how many people being sold into slavery, Mary, and this is 2018, mm -hmm. and we still talking about young girls disappearing. They've been Young they boys had, disappearing. I remember in the Civil Rights Movement oh, after Hammers. I came up here. Uh, one of the things that was um, always blasting a lot of it, and as as we began to unify between you know uh, between the various organizations, we began to get these complaints about how young women were being snatched, and they would not. Uh, their parents didn't know what had happened, and some of them never <coughs> made it back, Maureen. And they were going and, you know, put them into slavery and what have you, sex slavery. Sell these girls off. Sell these stuff. girls off into other countries. But you can't even tell the young people today. When I try to tell, you know, uh, uh, my daughters, look, I'm talking about the young ones. Uh, this kind of thing happens. That this is happening, you, you have know? to be in groups and you have to watch out what's going on out there. Oh, my, ain't nothing. We, we all right. Uh, yep. Let's talk about the girl club. Hmm. You know, uh, uh, what's her name? Natalie Holloway. And I think we've raised this before. Uh, uh, Natalie Holloway from uh, Florida, and she and her friends went on spring break. And uh, the girls hanging out, little Anglo-American girls, 18, 19 years old, and they go to a club, and they meet that criminal. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's smoking cigarettes and then they're drinking cocktails with uh, aprons down in them and fans and all those other kinds of things. And her friends are ready to go. And she said, I'm going to stay here with him. And her friend said, okay. And, uh, you know, uh, that's a, a total violation of the girls' club rules. Now, some of these little girls in uh, my school. And they talk about, uh, you know, they go to parties and whatnot together. And uh, this one or that one might have an interest in some young man uh, or somebody that looks uh, attractive to them. And their friends will leave them. And see, that's a violation of the girls' club rule. We came together. We We leave leave together. together. And see, you know, you can make additional plans further on along the lines. But no, we don't roll like that. And what happens? Hey, remember when we were hanging out? You remember when we were hanging out and we said, okay, we got a new rule. We're going, we're going dancing and everything, but as the, peop- as the men ask us for our phone number, mm-hmm. we're going to say, uh, no, we want your phone number. Mm-hmm. And we'll call you. And we will call you. Mm-hmm. And so. they, they said, oh, they come up with such uh, reasons, and reasons why they couldn't and, uh, give the phone number because at that time there were no c- cell phones or anything like that. But we we knew then that they were married mm-hmm. or with somebody. Of course, you know. So you know you have to you have to learn to work together, safety, a- and and watch each other back. And we'll, uh, 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 go to the club, especially you know you used to hang out and watch watch uh watch uh, Club Mozambique. Love all that live music and had, had a ball for years up in there. Mm-hmm. Never afraid, people, uh, guns, all this kind of stuff. We just, we missed all of that. None of that happened. But how many times were we at the club? No room to do anything but to stand right where you were and dance and come That's back all. to the table and there's two or three drinks there. Well, who sent these? Well, thank you very much. And you toast them and whatnot. But you don't drink no you don't drinks. Drink, don't drink so that much. you don't know where those hey, drinks you came don't from know and the what's people. in them. No. And my uncle, no. he's dead Some and rules, gone. You know. You know. Uh, and I, he, there was a rule in Louisiana, and at, at, you know, in my family, there was a, um, at, there was a um, saloon, as they call it, uh, about a few feet over mm-hmm. past the um, city line. So they could be open all night long. And he had, he had strictly told all of us, all his cousins, and also his daughter, I will never see you over there at Paradise. So well, look, Maureen, I didn't graduate from high school, and I'm 18, and, and I'm about to eventually be 19. Now, what, how is my uncle going to tell me something like that? He's over there, so I went over there. And all crossed sudden, the line. Yeah, crossed that line and was dancing by that music and stuff. And he said, uh, what are you doing here? I say, en- enjoying this music like you are. He said, I told y'all not to. I said, well, why should I worry? You here, so you going to have my back. And I enjoyed myself that night with my uncle. Well, what was the reason? Why couldn't you go over there? Why didn't he want you he to go over there? He did not want us hanging up, hanging out in the juke joint. Why? But that did not make it, uh, th- like we told him, that don't mean because we, we come over and hear the music that we're going to be uh, uh, over here in Paradise uh, Saloon. So what is it, stay open all night? Uh-huh, oh, okay, it's one night of night them long. after hours places. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, this question of safety and this question of poverty, they go hand in hand. Oh, yes, they and, do. And uh, 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 the kinds of things that I see young people get involved in is so it's so surreal, but I want to say something else, though. This kid, uh, I forgot his first name. Is it James Hogg? And the little girl, uh, uh, Emma, uh, uh, and, and is her last name Garcia? I can't I think of her last name. She has a Spanish name. And, and uh, yeah, and, and, but the young man has got a 4.1, 4.2 grade point average. And here he didn't sent off to different colleges and whatnot, and then the horrible shooting takes place down in Florida. And this uh, uh, conservative, Laura Ingram, she gets on the air and starts talking about how dense he is and and how he's whining because uh, the three or four or five colleges have turned him down already. And, and, And he's 18. He's a minor and one of the leaders in this student event. And that's why they turn him down. Well, I don't know. Uh, all the schools may not want you. 
But he's talking about the three or four that turned him down. It's going to be about 250 that's going to beg him to come there because this boy's got heart. He's good. But he jumped dead in her chest and said, listen, I'm not listening to nothing you say. I'm still a kid. He's a minor, man. He's in high school. And this grown adult, bigoted woman called him out. Why don't he go and uh, do something else? And then she's criticizing him, and he wasn't afraid. He said, I'm not paying attention to what you say. She come back later on after everybody's jumping on her and says, well, I apologize in the spirit of Holy Week. She's a demon. He calling, calling on Easter and all this. She's a demon. All She's a are. demon, a, 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 a bastard demon. And everybody and come tells out here. us. And he said, wait a minute, he said, I'm not going to accept her apology because she didn't mean it. But here's what we are going to do, all of us. We've got a list. Here come that social media group yes, it is. of all of her funders. We want to, all of these funders take your money away from her. And when I left the house today, there were eight organizations, corporations that said we have no plans to purchase or stay See, connected right. to Laura Ingram because she right. out here attacking youth. Yeah, and and those young people are uh, young Dirty, no people good. that. Uh, are gonna don't gonna you know that whole concept that we have marine mm -hmm. stick and stay stick and stay stick because and stay. uh they they know I know I I talked to a lot of them that come by the house mm -hmm, and said, mm -hmm. I said you know it's not gonna be no future for you all if you don't get out here and take a stand well they didn't see it but they see it now they see it now you know but uh, Emma comes from Cuban relatives oh she, and no. she put the little cuban flag on her arm oh, and man. another one of these conservatives is out there talking about does she know that what she's wearing is a uh, family emblems of true gangs and torturers and fidel castro emma said you know you can say what you want to say <laughs> we don't care we're coming to get you if you on the nia list check if you are one of them lists that's calling us out, check, check. 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 Uh, we went all the way to Chicago to talk to those young people who are getting killed, family members, yeah. every other week, and told them, y'all come on with us because we're going to fight for your stuff too. Yeah. Check, check, check. You can't make these kids you get out of their heart. You, you have an army that is at, oh, that's beginning to rise. They're formed. And, you um, know. I'm so proud of them. And they're talking about so something else coming up in April, mm -hmm. another event, and then something else coming up in May. Yes, they be right along Shoot with us, boy. Maureen. You know, just like uh, the fundamental principles of uh, the Poor People's Campaign, yes. uh, the call for uh, national uh, morality here. Uh, well, wait a minute, man. You got to say something about Highland Park. Me, where's uh, uh, wherever they are, but you gotta say something about them, well, uh, you know. Highland Park is embroiled in some court cases, and folks need to know. I don't know if you all have any meetings or anything like that set up, but who can people call if they want to learn a little bit more about these? Um, uh, uh, they Highland can call Park our office, welfare and, rights, mm -hmm. yeah, and we are open on, on Mondays, uh, after 12 o'clock. Uh, if you can't get no one at 12 o'clock, just leave a message, and uh, okay. the Highland Park mm -hmm. Human Rights Coalition will be able to get that information. That's 964-0618, mm -hmm. 964-0618. And then, two, those of you that are sitting back thinking that we're going to make it to um, the summertime before we go get some money, to be able to pay for our utility bills and stuff like that, you better get the moving and begin to call welfare rights also. Thaw just got some money, Maureen. Yes, they did. And, you know, we can't, you, you, you have to go into the summertime without those bills looking you in your face. Well, you also got a telephone call in the last two or three days and where DTE is making those robocalls saying that the senior Winter Protection Program ends March, March 31st. 31st. And so on April the 1st, those who are behind uh, 55 years of age and older, and you are on a winter protection plan, you're not on it, effective April the 1st. There is a CAD day, Mary, Customer Assistance Day. When is it? Uh, the next one, I think, is the 15th 
of uh, 15th of April. No, it can't be on the 15th because that's on a Sunday. People have to call the Welfare Rights Office because yeah. it was one Thursday yeah, at I Perfecting Church uh, mm -hmm. just a few days ago. And it's another one coming up. I think it's at the end of this week coming up, but people should call. But you should call uh, Welfare and you Rights. should go to that yeah. because, you know, they, got they, not only that, if uh, you say, oh, I make too much, uh, you, don't know. you don't know. You're not the one that is doing the figuring down. Yeah, so go make a go fill find out, out what's happening. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Ask welfare rights. You are on the air. Well, good evening, ladies. How are you? I'm fine. fine. That's wonderful. Okay, this is a bad subject here. Are you all aware that um, as of tomorrow, that anyone that did not go see their primary care physician as of March last year, of uh, thir year. March 31st, My up until is. today, been your doctor a year. that they is going to kick them off Medicaid? Uh, we, right. we, we heard about that. There is certainly a hearing process that is available, and uh, 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 we have heard about that, and we've been trying to tell folks, if you have not been to your primary care physician, that either you picked or is assigned to you through uh, uh, Michigan Healthy, uh, uh, and you, you get a letter that says since you haven't been in a year, your coverage is no longer in effect, uh, you still can file a hearing. Yes. But this caller is right, you know. And again, caller, you haven't been to the doctor in a year, you can't produce, you can't get a job anywhere, why should you have health care? Hey, talk about it. And I want to say this, is that, and with that healthy Michigan, um, I had a friend, and I was telling him about it. And he said, well, they sent me, and I'm a male, they sent me to an OBGYN doctor. And, you know, and I, I didn't want to laugh. I said, they sent you where? He said, my primary care physician is an OBGYN. I said, well, um... You need to call your worker uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quickly, and quickly, it, too. Straighten out. Yeah, because that's that's a little strange. And and, and 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 I hate to say this, I have been going, you know, helping people. Yes. But you know what? I'm gonna say this, Miss Taylor and Miss Kramer. I have um, I'm have to I have to go into retirement because this stuff will drive you crazy. It's twenty four seven, ain't it? And. I, and like I said, I'm not a social worker. I am a registered nurse that is retired now. Mm -hmm. And I am. I had to come out of my retirement yep. to help yeah. people yep. that did not know. But, you know, being a, in a, a nurse, you know, we got to deal with the social workers. All the time. And, and I know, I, you know, I, and I got two nieces that are social workers. And so, I, you know, I can call them. They'll tell me what to do. And then half of the time, I have to call them and let them know. Because yeah. they're like, well, we didn't get no, I didn't, we didn't get no notice. Well, Carla, uh, there are so many things collapsing all around us. The world that we used to know is totally changed now. This introduction of technology just means something totally different. So your example of, of people being kicked off of health care if they haven't gone to their primary care physician, is yet wrong. another example of what's going to happen. You don't have to have water. You don't have to have health care. You can be evicted. You can be foreclosed on. All of that can happen if you're no longer valuable. So what you're saying is absolutely correct, and you are right. A registered nurse, you can't retire until you drop dead of old age in your bed, okay? And you are absolutely right. And, with that, and I want to say this. Uh, Trinity Transportation is still accepting applications. Ooh, drive, so drive. all you have to do is go to Trinity. Um, and they have uh, their main office on Mac in Detroit. But um, the office that they're hiring out of right now is Dearborn Heights on Van Boyd Road, Van Boyd, mm -hmm. Van Boyd Road mm -hmm. and that's 26500 Van Boyd Road, um, Dearborn Heights, please go and if you, they're going to train you so you can get your CDL, that's, that's a good deal. please go 
and it's twenty one eighteen an hour. You cannot beat that. Oh, oh no. Trinity Transportation. You heard it from mm-hmm. one of our yeah. um, callers that researches this. Thank you very much, caller. And you have a wonderful and blessed weekend, and happy Easter to both of you. And thank you and to you. your family as well. Uh-huh. Thank you so thank much. You. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, Mary, we only have a couple of seconds left. Caller, you're the last caller of the day. Quickly. Three seconds. Oh, yes. Good evening. And good you know, evening. last week you were a good guest there that was talking about the gun laws and all like that. Uh, Commander and Brown was outstanding. I'm glad you yes, liked we, him. We enjoyed listening to him. I called several times, just like me and Sylvia were doing all the calls. We <laughs> gave out yeah. good information. Sylvia. Uh-huh. Y'all have an idea. To, and don't forget they're talking about July the 1st that they're raising the that uh, job. Insurance. 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 I know. Insurance. All right. Very good. Uh, Mary, we only have a couple of seconds. Uh, yes. Say something about another increase in insurance. What What else can they do what, to uh, us? Every time you look around, it's increased in everything. And people should be outraged. Outraged in Detroit, Highland Park, throughout the, the, the metropolitan area, and throughout the state, that they are not building no more low-income housing. The ones that they live in, a lot of them need to be fixed, Maureen. So, you know, we, we got to, you know, we got to know, we got to start understanding who the who is the enemy. In this insurance scam, uh, we're going to have to pay more per month for and you car know, you insurance. Know. And it goes into a private fund. Yeah. And they don't have to tell you where they're spending our money. And what kind some, of places is we know, live? I don't know what you have to do, Boreen. We're going to have to get some wet towels and go out here and beat the hell out of our working class. All righty. Uh, Lord will, the creek don't rise. We'll be back next week. Stop that smoking in those cars. Slow down smoking in those cars. And everybody be good. Let's don't hurt anybody. Happy holidays. Happy and Passover and happy Easter. Goodbye. Goodbye.